Let's talk about syllogistic. Now, this is a very basic of the theory of logic. We have already covered the various aspects under which we understand the ma major premise, the minor premise, the middle term, the subject and the predicate. Let's understand that in finer details today. So what we have is two statements. The first statement is known as the major premise. The second statement is the minor premise. And then based on that, we draw a conclusion. So let's have the major premise first. To help understand the concept of categorical syllogism, it's very important that we have just two premises that are there and the middle term is repeated in both the premises. However, when it comes to conclusion, there is no middle term. Okay, so the first major premise that is given here is all dogs are cats. That means dogs, if any, would be cat. That means there would be no dogs that would be outside the region of the cats. So I shade this region. So that is my major premise. My minor premise says all the cows are dogs. Now all the cows are dogs. That means there is no cow which is not a dog. So I shade all the cows which are outside the region of dogs. So I shade this region. Okay, now since these two regions are shaded, I see a conclusion that all cows are cats. Now where can the cows be found? This is the only region where I can have the cows and definitely if this is the region where I have the cows, I can say all the cows are cats and that makes my conclusion true. But what is this kind of arrangement? Since both the premises begins with all, and the conclusion again begins with all. This is a a a form of a a a mood that we would say because it is all all and all. In the square of a position, we have understood if it is all, we call it with a. If it is e, we call it as no, no is the e, and then sum is i, and sum not is o form. Again. Each of these forms would have four figures that would be there. So this AAA where you have the middle term and the predicate and then you would have the subject and the middle term arrangement as you can see in this diagram uh, that is given. So you have the middle term and the predicate and then you would have the subject and the middle term arrangement and then the subject predicate arrangement for the conclusion that's always seen. So this is what is the figure one. In AAA, one is the only valid form. And therefore, if I change the middle term position, you would have an invalid form of syllogism that would be seen. However, we are not to understand that as of now. The idea is we have taken the cats in the predicate. So the major term, the predicate of the major term becomes the predicate in the conclusion and the subject and the minor term becomes the subject in the conclusion. So here cows become what? The cows becomes the subject and cats become what? Cats become the predicate. That means what is derived from the major premise is what? It is the predicate. What is derived from the minor premise is what? It is the subject. Very, very important. Also, in the Greek logic, when it was discussed, this middle term was known as meson. So these are just other names that you must know. So those middle terms were known as mesons. And the two other extremes, that is the cats and the cows in this case, were known as acrons. The various figures that were formed, the four figures that we talked about, where the position of the middle terms would change. It could be either middle term or the middle term. It could be middle term in the starting or middle term towards the end. So those would be figure two, three, four, and uh, so one, two, three, and four figures that are there with different positions, which we have covered in our separate class on mo uh, moods and figures. Now here, these figures are known as schematas. So those were the Greek names that were given to it. 
I repeat again in the minor term where you have the subject that becomes the subject in your conclusion and from the major term you have the predicate that comes into your conclusion as we said the four forms of figure so here I have a repetition to help you understand that so in the first figure you have the middle term and the predicate then you have the subject and the middle term and finally subject and predicate arrangement as we saw in the case of AAA1 which is a valid form of syllogism the most interesting part is E I O is a valid form in all the four figures. So in the second figures you have middle term towards the last. In the third figure you have middle terms towards the starting and how you can remember this is the second and the third are mirror images we can remember this way and the first and the fourth are again mirror images so that is a very interesting thing about categorical syllogism the next important thing is when do we consider this categorical syllogism as a standard form so three rules for it rule number one when we consider categorical syllogism as a standard form if all of its uh, statements are given and the first premise contains the major term the second important thing is the second premise contains the minor term and there should be two premises with a conclusion so overall two premises and a conclusion and that is a standard form the next is the six rules of categorical syllogism. So here we need to understand that this categorical syllogism is a very important concept when the middle term must be distributed in at least one of the premises. What do we mean by distributed? Now this is something that we would be covering in another lecture distributed versus undistributed but a quick understanding of distributed is a term that refers to all the members of the class or it explains something which is fully occupied. So let's say I have a simple example all horses are four legged what does it mean? If there is even one horse, it would be four-legged and all the horses also would be four-legged. But when it comes to four-legged animals, there could be other animals that could be seen. There could be cows, cats, dogs which have four legs. So this means the horse is distributed, but the four-legged animals is not distributed. So in the categorical syllogism, it's important very first rule is the middle term must be distributed in either of the one premise that is there the second important thing is if the term is distributed in the conclusion then it automatically means it was distributed in the premise so since the conclusion is being derived from the premise if i am saying it is distributed in the conclusion that means it's fully occupied in the conclusion that means in the premise it was fully occupied or it was distributed. The next important thing is a categorical syllogism cannot have two negative premises. So both the premises cannot be negative. I cannot start both the premises with no and no and then say it is a valid form. Okay. The next important thing is if there is even one premise that is negative, I would have a negative conclusion. So even if my one premise is negative, I would have a negative conclusion. What is a good example? E, I, O. So E means no. I mean some. So my premises are no and some but my conclusion is some not which is again a negative. So even one premise if it is negative my conclusion would tend to be what? It would tend to be negative. The next important rule for categorical syllogism is a negative conclusion must have a negative premise. So what we said just vice versa of it if i am coming up with one conclusion and that one conclusion is negative that automatically means that one of the premise was negative again the next interesting thing is two universal premises cannot have particular conclusion what does it mean it means that if i start with all cats are dogs and then i say 
all cows are dogs then i cannot say some cows are cats as a conclusion so if my both the premise begins with a universal it can be all it can be no in that case my conclusion cannot be a particular conclusion okay so if both the statements are a a or both the statements are e e or a e in that case my conclusion cannot be i or o so that combination is not possible so these are the six important rules for categorical syllogism we would be covering many interesting lectures on logic and don't miss those we have some of the most interesting concepts upcoming yet